Let's have a lesson, a quick crash course into Photoshop. It looked like the majority of people did not have experience in Photoshop. That's fine. It's not a requirement for this class. Although you will see the value of it because you, you want to be able to crop a photo or add text to it or fix something in the photo. So let's do a little bit of work in Photoshop. When these computers turn on, they usually pop up to ask you to log in with the Adobe ID. I think most people just close that screen because we're not using any Adobe products. Um, I want to use an Adobe product now, Photoshop. So if you did sign into that little pop-up, great. If you didn't, like me, let's go to the Start menu here and let's go run Adobe Photoshop. CC 2019. So from the menu there, go ahead and launch Adobe Photoshop. The first thing that should happen is it will pop up with a, with a login screen. And this is where if, um, if, you, if you're, for example, already taking the other class, CIS 124 Photoshop, you already have an Adobe ID. If you don't have an Adobe, an Adobe ID, there is a little bit of a process that you need to go through to get an Adobe ID. So how many of you know that you have an Adobe ID? Raise your hand. OK, less than half of the class. So we're going to need to take a moment to, I think we're going to actually have to be able to go this way. Um, question for you to, when you do this in Marianne's class, what, what's the process that that this screen works best with? Because there's a login with, a, with an Adobe ID, or do people click the sign in with an enterprise? No, 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 no. Just log in as there, or you can log into the Google account. If you already signed into your Chrome or Canvas, mm -hmm. you, sh you could, you can just automatically click that button right there. And it okay. Reload to either re reapply in their email again by yourself, or it just automatically connects. Okay, let's try it like this. If you don't have an Adobe ID, let's try it like this. Click on the Continue with Google, because our whole Southwestern College email system... Because your, um, sorry, it's because the, your email is your Adobe account. Yeah. Um, Victor, yes. so in the sign-in for username, it is possible to just type in the school email address. Yeah, and now oh. the water Okay. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Um, there's a lo little load wheel, and then it automatically switches to the um, uh, another window. Oh, okay. For, yeah. for connecting with the uh, the MySWC portal. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's convenient. So either way, everyone, what you what you need to do right now is um, try your your student uh, your official Southwestern College email address right up there. Type that in, and then the screen will change for you to type in your Southwestern College email. Uh, password and then that should get you into this so that's your first task go ahead and sign in with this and if you're having trouble let us know but sign in on this first and let Photoshop keep starting up and once that starts up we'll we'll talk a little Photoshop we'll go ahead and sign in We'll take a moment to sign in. That'll pop up in a moment. You should get that welcome screen like that. If you're having trouble, let me know. But if you want to get the full advantage of the lesson at the moment, you do want to log in. Or, of course, you can replay the video later if you want. But if you're able to log in right now, that would be best because you'll be able to follow along. But any Google ID will also work too. Yes, right here you might have you if you try to use your sound card. Yeah. 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 I guess for the first time. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. so we're going to get the browser. I'm so sorry. Okay. I was going to have never created a Adobe ID form. Yeah. I just saw. This is actually how we did that. I have a sound system.
All right, uh, how many of you managed to log in just fine? Raise your hand. Okay, so let's do a little bit of Photoshop here then. When this starts up, you might have like the take the tour, check out what's new and all of that. So I would recommend at some point if you really wanna get the most out of this, especially with a free account, that you take the tour at some point. On the left side, we have the button create new which is the same as going up to file new. So let's on the left side, if you don't see it, click, if you do see it, click create new. If you don't see, click create new, you can always go back to file new. Let's create a new file here. So we get this, this screen here that already there's a lot of complexity. Now, if you're working with something like Microsoft Word, you just turn on Word, you've got a piece of paper to start writing your essay. Photoshop is very different in terms of before you can do anything, you have to pick a, um, a graphic to work with or a dimensions and such to work with. And for me, the default on the right side says five, 7 inches by 5 inches, 300 resolution. This is setting itself up to be like printed, on the, uh, printed out at some point. I'm not dealing with something I'm going to print just yet. This is going to be for the web. These dimensions are wrong. I'm not dealing with inches anyway on the web. So at the top, we have a bunch of presets. Photo, print, art, web. To start off with, here as practice, uh, I'm going to select web. And then eventually, you're going to have requirements in your assignment, right? The requirements will say, make it this dimensions. But for the moment, let's switch over to the web size. And we'll just pick the, this basic one right here, web most common. Click that. You see here you have some width and some height and some resolution. These are going to be the dimensions of your image. And in my case, the default here is 1366 by 768. It's landscape. I'm going to leave those alone. That's fine. I'm going to select web, and I'm going to select web most common, and then create. So I get a I get a starting point image just like it now finally like in Word or whatever I um, I had a piece of paper right away in Photoshop I don't get something right away until I pick a starting point um, document the dimensions of my screen are a little bit different and therefore I get these panels here that are a little too big for myself so I'm going to close these in a moment. But this is the thing about Photoshop. There's a lot of tools, there's a lot of panels, there's a lot of menus, there's a lot about Photoshop. It's very complex software. We're not gonna become a pro in one lesson. You're not gonna become a pro in you know one week of doing this. That's why we have that class, CIS 124. It's 16 weeks long to learn everything about Photoshop. So to orient ourselves a little bit here, at the top, we've got a menu bar with a variety of commands, filters, working with type or text. We've got our, our top menu over there. We have various tools on the left side. Um, some of these kind of have maybe entered popular culture enough that you might guess what they are. Like if I select this brush tool over here, and what's cool about the modern Photoshop is that you can hover over a tool and it gives you a preview of what it does. So even before selecting it, the brush tool lets you paint. And I think they're kind of showing off that you're painting behind an object, which is too advanced. But let's, do, let's go ahead and do this. Click that brush tool on the left side, and then write your initials. So it's a brush tool. Simple. You can draw with it, and you can undo things. Just like any other software, we have Control Z to undo. So just about anything that you can do in Photoshop, you can undo it or redo it. Up on the Edit menu, like most software, we have Undo or Redo. And then I can draw stuff. Well, I'm currently drawing with, with a color black. And I want to change to another color. Again, my screen's slightly different than yours, but you should see a panel called Color. And it shows me here different shades of red. So if I click somewhere in that color 
quadrant, I can pick a shade of red. But maybe I want a shade of blue or yellow, but it's only showing me red. If you've never used Photoshop before, you might figure out that in this little color panel right here, I have the ability to select any color that I want, but right now they're all set to red. So if you've never used Photoshop before, how do you think I change this to another color besides red? On the right side, exactly, this little slider here. When you move this slider throughout the rainbow, if you move this slider on the right side to the blue area, then I get the various shades of blue. Very blue, dark blue, closer to white. So you can pick any color that exists, pretty much. Check it out, I'm moving it by telepieces. But um, you can go here and select anything, and then it uh, you pick any color. Now, this is obviously simple stuff, where this gets way more complex. But you have the full range of colors to work with. And at the moment, at the moment I'm drawing in one layer. Let's look at this concept of layers. Layers, like in the real world, it's like this. I've got two sheets of paper. And right now, I'm drawing on one sheet of paper, so all my drawings are on one sheet of paper. Layers in a digital software are like different sheets of paper, but they're transparent. So imagine transparent sheets. What I can do is I can draw on this sheet right here, and this sheet won't affect the one below it. The one below it, the drawing and stuff there, will still be intact. But then where, what I've drawn on the top sheet, I can still move it, reposition it, and so forth. Because maybe I drew this amazing masterpiece, but I want to move it around a little bit. Maybe I want to move the face over here. Well, I, didn't set, I did not set myself up in a way to move it. I've got this move tool at the top. If I try to move the face, everything moves. I didn't set myself up for separate pieces, therefore separate layers. I'm going to add a layer. And you should have, I think some of you have it open, but if you don't have it open, there's a panel called Layers. Mine's closed. But if there's a closed panel, you can uh, click it and, it and it opens up. Double click to close, maybe. I have this layers panel. I have one layer. I want to create a new layer to make a different drawing. You see right here under layers, you have all of these icons. You know, you're not going to learn all of these icons in one week, and a lot of them you don't need them unless you're getting advanced. But one icon down at the very bottom right here is new, create a new layer. You can have basically as many layers as you want. As, as uh, how much memory you have on your computer, basically. And then so, right here, this, this icon creates a new layer. Click on that one time. And the panel shows we've got layer one and layer two. And I see on the tiny little preview that I've already started to draw something on this layer, and this one's empty. It's got a checkerboard pattern but that represents that it's empty. They have to represent somehow that it's transparent, so it's a checkerboard. And now if I draw something on, a, on one layer, you can see the preview right here. I've got something on one layer, something on another layer. Now when I go to the Move tool, that very first tool at the top, that four-headed arrow, now when I select the Move tool, I have separate elements. So that's a very powerful thing in digital imaging, the concept of layers. The first versions of Photoshop actually did not have layers. It wasn't until like version 3 that they added the technology for layers. And now it's such a common thing, it's like I, I can't live without it. I want 
this thing on one layer, this thing on another layer, so I can easily move them around and reposition them. You just have to be careful about which of the layers you have selected. You see, when I click on layer one, it highlights it. And that's the one I'm working with. So if I try to move it, that's what moves. If I select the second layer, that's the one that moves. So these layers are a very important concept in Photoshop. In, they also have them in GIMP and Pixlr, basically separating content. Now all of this while we've been working and I've been making my you know, amazing graphic here. Um, but what about if the power goes out? I'm going to lose it all. Uh, what do you usually do as you work on any sort of uh, you know, digital thing once in a while? We save it. Let's talk about saving here because this is a little different than other software. Let's go to File, Save As. Let's use the example of Microsoft Word. You type an essay, you save it, you're done. But Photoshop can deal with different types of graphics. A Word document usually ends in .doc or .docx graphics and in a variety of other formats. Maybe what are some graphic formats that you might have heard about or know about? What's that one animated one that everyone loves? GIF. GIF. Animated GIFs. That's a file format. Good. What about any other kind of graphic that you might have heard of? JPEGs. JPEGs for photos. So GIFs and JPEGs are common forms of, of graphics. As I'm trying to save it right now, at the bottom it says, what name do you want to give it? and what format, what type. So I see here under Save As Type, it's going to save as Photoshop format .psd. Well, that's not valid for, um, for a website, but it is important for our work in progress because all of these layers that I might create, they don't exist in a JPEG or a GIF. JPEGs and GIFs are flat. Therefore, you can no longer really edit them that easily once it's a GIF or a JPEG. So the Photoshop format is the format I want to save it while I'm working on it. And then eventually we have to export it or convert it into a JPEG, GIF, or PNG, the valid formats of the web. So out of curiosity, if you look in there, Save As Type, there's all of these formats. A few that you've heard of and probably a lot that you've never heard of. Like the Cytex format and Targa. Oh, I remember that one. What else? Uh, PCX, that's old. And then we've got IFF format and BMP. So there's a bunch of different formats that these graphic that this file can be saved as, but as our work in progress, while we finish it, we want to save it as a Photoshop. PSD file. I'm going to save mine to the desktop or flash drive, wherever you want. And on the file name, let's call this practice with today's date dot PSD. So as you're working on your project, you always want to save it as PSD. Once it's finished, once it's ready to go to the web or get printed for extra credit, we'll want to export. We'll see that in a moment. But um, let's save this. All these other settings, obviously, I want to save this with the, with the layers intact. I don't want to turn off layers because then I'm going to lose all that extra editability. Everything else is just defaults. Click Save. It might uh, ask you, do you want to maximize compatibility? If you've got an older version of Photoshop, do you want to make this? This We've got right now the newest version of Photoshop, uh, 2019. Maybe at home, you have the 2017 or 2015, whatever. If we leave maximize compatibility on, we should be. you should be able to open the file in different versions of Photoshop. 
So I'm going to leave it on just in case. Click OK. So I've got this graphic I've started to work with. I've got two layers. I want to create a new layer, but I don't want to see what I've already drawn before. So let's create a new layer, layer three. And then you see there's an eye. This is supposed to represent an eyeball. There's an eye next to the layer. And if you click the eye, whatever was on that layer gets hidden. It doesn't get deleted. The layer's still there. The little thumbnail shows it's still there. But I can easily hide and show a layer by clicking on that empty spot. And so this is kind of really cool compared to real world. As I said, for your real world assignment, you're going to turn in some sketches. And with a real paper, I'm going to divide it into four pieces. And on each corner, maybe make a little sketch. Well, digitally, I have infinite or unlimited number of pieces of paper. I just make new layers, hide the ones that I don't need, show the ones that I do, and I can keep working. So we saw the we saw the brush tool, which is one way to to start to work on our project. Let's go over here to this other tool. Now on mine, my tool, my toolbox at the left, on my screen it gets cut off. I guess they're hidden there under those three dots. What is there? Uh, no, that's edit. Okay, so on mine they're kind of cut off. Um, I am going to um, click this arrow at the top top left over here to make the toolbar double column. You don't have to do this, but on mine, because it cuts off at a certain point, I can't see everything. I have to expand it this way, like that double double column. Because at the bottom, mine was hiding some things that I uh, that were hard for me to see. That it was cutting off there, like the color picker. That same color picker, color panel that was over here, I find it here, but on mine it was cut off. So I went to the double column. You'll, you'll probably see it just fine because you have nice big monitors. But I'm trying to find, there is a tool right here that's a plain old rectangle tool, a square. And the preview shows you, okay, this can make you, let you make boxes. Let's try this for a moment. Click on that rectangle tool. Select a color. I'm going to draw a square, rectangle, whatever. So I can draw shapes. I can draw rectangles and shapes. Well, what might be cool here is what if I've got a, um, what if I've got a background shape and then on top of it with the brush tool in a new layer, I draw something on top of it like like this so here I've got with the rectangle tool on its own layer I've drawn a rectangle then back with the brush tool I've drawn with the brush in white some some letters on top or an image a face or something there's lots of logos out there um, that are like that. There's some sort of shape. There's some negative color on it and some very creative ones. I have also, I'm going to go back to the rectangle layer. I have also not only a rectangle, but you see most of these tools have a little triangle in the corner. This is like a little drawer that you open up because most tools have more than one mode or like a sub tool. If you click and hold the rectangle tool, it pops up. Let me make a rectangle, a rounded rectangle, an ellipse, like a circle or oval, a polygon shape, a line, or custom. Well, I have that also with the brush tool. If you clicked and held, held brush, you have other things. Just don't worry about that for the moment. But most tools, as you see here, have more tools built in if you click and hold it. 
for this rectangle, I want to draw a circle instead, ellipse tool. So you click and hold the rectangle, it pops up, and then you can click the ellipse. I can pick a color, and then draw a, um, a shape. And I can still reposition these things around because they're in separate layers with the Move tool. Okay, squares, circles. You can do some interesting creative things with just those, with just those shapes and things. You can get really creative. What about this? What if I play with negative space? What if I draw a circle? And then on a new layer, I draw another circle, but maybe with white, something like this. I put one circle on top of another circle. So I started off with one circle. I see here one ellipse in one color. And then with two more ellipses, in white, because I've got a white background. And then I drew circles on top of that, and now I'm getting this different, interesting shape. Out of the plain circles, I'm able to make complex things by simply putting other shapes on top of it. See, that's still just a circle right there and right there. It's uh, playing with negative space. It's playing with the idea of it's fooling the eye. That originally was a circle. I draw another circle or ovals above it. I create a different shape. Now, I've been doing a lot of hard work. I need to save. You need to save every once in a while. Control S. Don't forget to save every once in a while. As you create more and more layers, I'm going to lose track of what they are. The thumbnail might be too small. I'm going to lose track of what they are maybe because of these generic names. You see this as ellipse 3, 2, 1. I can organize myself by double clicking the name of the layer, you know, calling it whatever I want. White circle one, that might be useful. It might be useful to name your layers as you have all of these different pieces. And then maybe even grouping them together. Now all of these three things, and I've got a I've got this circle plus this circle plus this circle becomes one thing. Well, if I try to move the one thing, if I try to move the whole thing, only one thing moves unless I link them together. You see there's a little chain right here to link things. It doesn't let me link yet. If I select this one and then with the shift key select this one and this one, I can shift click each one of them. I can then click the little link icon right there, link layers, a little chain. They all get the little chain on the side. And now when I try to move, everything moves at once as if it was one thing. So that is clicking on them to select them and then shift clicking to select more. And then activate the link, linking them. So again, in, in today's lecture, we're, we're not going to become experts. I'm not going to be able to cover what all of these other things do, what that panel does, how do I make special effects. We're going to look at a few basic concepts. You're going to have the whole week to um, read the, 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 the lessons, which link you to then a bunch of other lessons to maybe get very creative. But let's do a little bit more. Let's say I want to 
uh, keep playing with this concept of shapes, but I'm not artistic and I can't figure out how to make a cool shape. We have these custom shapes. If you click and hold the, the shape tool there, we have rectangle, ellipse, etc. We have custom shape. This one's interesting. Let's select custom shape. Custom shape gets activated. I'm going to create a new layer just to, uh, to work on a new layer. I've got custom shape activated. And then what's different here is on the top bar, the top options bar, I see an arrow where it says shape. And if I click and drag, it's going to create a, um, an arrow. OK. But if I click the, the little menu up there, I have a few other shapes. I have like this lightning bolt. Not a whole lot of them, it seems. Maybe that heart would look cool in my, in my logo. Doesn't look like there's a whole lot. Actually, there are more, but because, again, Photoshop is very complex. There's lots of tools, there's lots of panels, there's lots of hidden things. There are hidden shapes here besides these, like 20 or whatever that are here. You'll see that in this shape panel, when I zoom in, it looks a little weird, but that little, um, that's supposed to be like a gear, like options. Click on that options. You have some options. How big to make the thumbnails? OK, great. But then at the bottom, you have show me shapes related to animals, frames, ornaments. I'm going to select animals. And when that pops up, just click OK for the moment. And I've got a few animal shapes. So I can put. I can put these built-in animal shapes. As I'm starting to draw these, you know, I might get a shape that's like very wide or a shape that's very tall. And I don't like either. I want to keep the shape in proportion. If you hold down on the keyboard shift while you're drawing the shape, it keeps it in proportion. If I don't hold down shift, it can get too wide or too tall. But if I hold down shift as I drag, it stays in proportion. Now, maybe I do want like a rabbit that's a little taller like that or wider like that. Sure. But if I want a shape that stays in proportion, hold down shift. And so this is a possible way to make your logo as well, your, your um, banner image. We have freehand with the brush tool. We have basic shapes combined with other shapes. We have these custom shapes. There's a whole bunch of other ones you can get here too. I kind of like to do just them all. Show me all the shapes at once. And then that panel gets full of lots of shapes. Lots and lots of shapes. Hey, that crown will look good on my on my banner. I'm gonna make a new layer because this is this is getting very cluttered. So we have lots of layers. You might have to hide a lot of things, but I'm gonna make a new. A new layer just because I want to create a new uh, question over here Alex question um, I want to make a brand new layer and uh, maybe draw this crown because what you can do is not only make it with solid colors but you can do special effects so I've drawn a shape it's on a layer and then I have an icon down here FX effects so when I click on that effects I can do a drop shadow I can do some kind of glow 
bevel drop shadow. And I get yet another complex screen with yet more icons and things to change. So I've got a shape, I've added an effect, I've manipulated the values to get what I want. I can combine other things as well, outer glow, inner glow, etc. Bevel and emboss, I can take a, like this flat shape and it was a flat shape, but then I've added these special effects to it, making it more uh, customized and unique to me. And if I like what that looks like, I click OK. If I don't, I can double click. I have something new on my layers, an effect. I can double click to go back to that editing panel and further customize that. I can double click it and it goes back. So with a drop shadow, it makes it look a little three-dimensional. I added that bevel and emboss. Starting with a simple shape, that's what I'm getting. So here's another way I could develop my web banner. I can use shapes and then add cool special effects. Question. Okay, this is the last thing that we will look at, and then you'll have some time to work because you might have ideas. Remember, we're going to learn some of these things, but you don't want to just get into Photoshop and start playing with this. You might want to first do the sketching. Now, it is the requirement to do a basic sketch first and turn that in as well. So you might as well you know, draw four ideas or whatever on regular old paper because you will have to turn that in. And then once you've got that idea, I might try to then, how do I recreate that digitally? Here's the last thing. Let's say for the last thing that I want to do here is text. So I've got a text tool on the left side. So the horizontal type tool. Clicking on that one time gives me at the top fonts, sizes, and colors. So at the top here, I can select a font and size, maybe I'll go with really big for the moment, 72, and then some color. When I click somewhere, I get some placeholder text and then I can start typing Victor's Royal Bakery. So the text tool can have a variety of fonts and even these special effects I can go in and also because it's a layer to any layer I can basically add an effect, add some cool effects to this one. If I do the same effects to that text, um, that, that will uh, create that consistency. 
and I can have as many text layers as I want as well just like I can have as many shape layers brush tool layers and like a lot of these other things that I haven't even been able to talk about if you want to explore them I can have so many things and so many layers you're just limited by like the memory of your computer and these computers are pretty good so you shouldn't have any trouble and then maybe in a different font I even have emoji that I can work with at the very top I've got the emoji fonts put some of those Yeah, Wingdings font. That would be fun too. Just like Word, I can select and change it. So, this particular graphic here is not the right dimensions that I'm asking for, but it is some of the content that I'm asking for in the assignment you know having some text the name of your business some sort of slogan about your business and something else more than that remember the requirements of the assignment you need certain dimensions and uh, any font to write the name of your business, any other font to write the tagline or slogan, and then something else. Play around with other things. Uh, very briefly, I, can't, I cannot fully demo this, but if you want to bring in a different picture into this picture, you can do File, Place Embedded. You can take this other picture that you might have had to combine with this picture, I don't have one handy to show you. But take a take a look at that file menu place embedded. You're going to embed some other picture. You're going to place it into this picture and it'll be its own layer and you can move it around and position it and do all that cool stuff. So you have a lot that you could do even with a quick, you know, what, what was this an hour and a half, 2 hour quick look at Photoshop. There's still way more to learn, but Photoshop itself nowadays it says go check out this video about the basics check out this video about fixing a photo I've got then the the um, the readings in the in the weekly module some of those have video as well you can go off to YouTube YouTube is full of lots and lots and lots of videos for free about people teaching you how to do everything you know how to create a cool logo you're gonna find you know two million results they're all right and they're all wrong just watch a few see what you like see what makes sense and um, that's what your assignment's going to be on for, for Sunday. You need to turn in like the uh, real sketch. You, you scan it and or photograph it and upload it. So you need a sketch, and then you need the digital version uploaded. Um, as I've got listed here, export your file to Ping. Right now, we've been working with a PSD file. That's not the file you're going to turn in. That's not the type of file that you're going to upload to a website. PSD is fine for working on it because it has the layers, all of these special effects and layers and things, intact. A JPEG, GIF, or PNG does not have layers, but it's the final version of the graphic, and so you'll need to export, and we can do that right over here. File, export, quick export as PNG. That's what I'm asking you to turn in. If you submit it as a JPEG or a GIF, that's not quite what I'm asking for. I want ping format because it, it can be high quality compared to JPEG. It's not animated compared to GIF, but I'm not asking for an animated GIF. I'm not asking for an animated GIF either. I only accept GIFs, not, GIF, not GIFs. Just kidding. Um, so ping is the one we want. And then that'll just say, okay, where do you want to save this? And this pops up in a moment. There we go. Where do you want to save this? And it's going to save as whatever.png or ping. Put your name on it so I know who to give the A plus to. And you're going to submit that to the to Canvas by Sunday. So we're going to have some time to work. 
until the end of class, 4.30. We're going to have some uh, tutoring time, 4.30 uh, to 6.30 as usual, tomorrow also if you need it, and Friday. So I'm going to keep repeating that in case you need it. Uh, I do see that people uh, hold off a little bit sometimes in doing the work until one day before. And if it works out, great. But if you suddenly run into issues when you're asking one day before the deadline, you might not get the fastest response. So start on your work early. Get it out of the way early in the week. Our class is Monday. You can get this stuff done early in the week and have other stuff to do the rest of the week. And especially if you have trouble, ask us uh, in class or email me and such. There's also the Canvas Q&A section. Remember that. Obviously, if you want an answer from me, you can contact me. But going over to the discussions, there's this whole Q&A area where you can also kind of help each other out a little bit if you want. I'll be monitoring this, of course, and replying to people as I did there. But you can, uh, you can, you know, ask people and stuff. Ask, ask here as well, in addition to asking me in person, but um, or email. But that's what our goals are. You're going to make a graphic, check the requirements on Canvas so that so that you don't get deducted points because I'm asking for specific things as usual. Check the requirements on Canvas. Check the um, rubric that breaks it down exactly how you're getting graded. So if you do have the right dimensions, the right format, etc., full credit. If you don't quite have that, you're almost there. If you don't have any of that, no credit. So we've been doing that for the past seven weeks. That should not be any surprise. And um, that's, that's it for the moment. But any questions, general questions on anything Photoshop related or the class related, assignment related? Yes. OK, that one's pretty open-ended, so we can do this. We'll do a search right here. Uh, website banner inspiration. I like to search that way when I want to get ideas for something with the keyword inspiration. So I'm just going to do a quick search right here. And go maybe to the images result. Um, so just about any kind of result that you get is what I'm looking for. Notice here. So hello, we are Kappa. Freelance Web Design WordPress Development. So they've got a cool graphic in the background, text on top of it. They've got their text of their company name and then a slogan. So that would be good. Over right here, Twinkling of an Eye. They have the name of their business, I guess, Twinkling of an Eye. There's some slogan that I can't quite read there unless they zoom in. Uh, and then the graphic that they made. Pencil, think with your hands. So the name of this company is Pencil. They have their text and so forth. So something like this, any one of these results that you get, look at this one. They've got their name of their business. Uh, well, I can't read that. Yarek, Yarek Schoen. Some say I make magic. So check out any of these articles that say 55 awesome website headers. But anything like this where there's some text of your business, your slogan, and besides that, like how do you want to show off what your business is about. If someone only saw this top graphic, um, what what would they get out of it? Like, I can't see all the words here, but I can see that this is about, you know, conservation and the environment and such. Obviously, it's very, very, very well designed. You don't have to go that far. But some top graphic that shows off right away, my business is about this, because this is the first graphic that, that I see. And if you need any more help and inspiration, we'll help during the lab times. Any other questions? All right, so I will have some lab time until the end of class. More afterwards if you need it. This video will be uploaded as usual. You can replay it if you'd like. And um, you can work as much as you need to. And this will be due Sunday.